Hey everybody, Matthew Doyle here and I'm going to do a quick stream today to show you guys how to do vehicle physics inside of Stingray with Maya LT uh, as your digital content creation tool and uh, this is just going to be a really short uh, demonstration of physics. I'm not going to go into detail uh, about a lot of the settings and stuff. I just want to show you how to build your own custom car bring it into Stingray and basically replace the vehicle in the vehicle physics template. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the tutorial. Hope you guys enjoy this today. This is actually inspired by the guys at CMU, Carnegie Mellon. Uh, some students there using Stingray to do some vehicle uh, stuff and uh, I had to come up with, a, with uh, some help with, for those guys and so I decided to go ahead and create a tutorial. So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Let's just jump right over to uh, my monitor here in Stingray let's have a look at what I'm uh, what I'm talking about here now right up <clears throat> when you open stingray and you do the project manager window uh, you're gonna find uh, a templates tab and so in order for to follow along if you'd like to follow along with this you'll you want to create a new vehicle template and to do that we'll just click on the templates tab when my uh, stingray window decides to open up now when I'm streaming sometimes it causes things to load slower inside of uh, Stingray uh, because streaming takes up a lot of resources. If I can't get this to run I'm just gonna go ahead and restart Stingray. So let's just do that now real quick. We'll start fresh. Go ahead and save that level. Alright so I'm gonna start from the game launcher here and we'll go to the Stingray and we're gonna launch uh, the version I'm using here. Uh, I'm actually using a version of Stingray that uh, is, has not been released yet, but I'm not going to show you any of the new features, so uh, don't worry about that. <laughs> you can see my LT in the background there. I've got my car already set up, but I'm going to show you how to set the car up. All right, so in Stingray, when you go to the Templates tab, you can create a new vehicle template here. So you've obviously got all these different templates. The vehicle template actually comes pre-built with a level with some actual vehicle physics. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and I've already created my vehicle project here. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up. Alright, and inside this project, if we go to the content folder and then levels, I'm just going to load this vehicle level here. And let's go ahead and play it. Alright, so this is the basic vehicle testing level. You can see the car here moving around very appropriately. Wheels are turning. Um, all being affected by physics. Now, this is not animated. None of this is animated. This is all physics control. There are no bones on the vehicle or anything like that. It really is just a static object. Uh, it's combined of five objects, actually. You've got the car body and then four wheels. All right. So let's look at how to actually replace this object with our own object. So first of all, we'll go ahead and delete the vehicle from the level. We're going to leave this one over here, but we're going to delete this, this vehicle here because this is what's being used by the Lua code as a reference for our vehicle. And we're going to go uh, into our models folder here. And I've created a folder called My Car. And we're going to be importing My Car in here in a minute. But before we do that, we need to jump over to My LT and create it. So I've already created a car here, but I'm going to show you guys uh, how to go about doing it to make sure it's set up correctly. Because if you don't set this up correctly when you export it in my LT, Stingray is going to have some issues with the physics, the way it's set up, because everything is being calculated on the fly. So what I've got here is I've got a group called car, and within that group I've got my five objects. I've got my four wheels and my car body. So what we're going to do, we're just going to move this guy off to the side, and we'll create a new one right here at the origin. So I've got interactive creation turned on, or non-interactive creation uh, I should say. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a polycube here. And we'll change the size of this guy. So on the attributes panel, I'm going to go over here to polycube 1. And we're going to change the width to something like 100. Let's see if that kind of matches up with our other car. Yeah, that looks pretty close. Uh, we'll do height of 60. See, th these units are centimeters. 
So uh, that's actually only two feet high, roughly. There's 30 centimeters to a foot, basically. Uh, all right, and then depth will do something like uh, 200. There we go. So that's good enough. Okay, and next up, we're going to need to create our wheels. So let's go ahead and just right click here and create a cylinder. Go to the, to the poly cylinder over here in the attribute panel. We're going to make the radius 25 and the height 25. And then we will rotate this guy 90 degrees. So I'm going to hold down J for discrete rotate and then just rotate him 90 degrees there. And I can freeze the transform on him now. So he's all, all zeroed out. All right, and then we're going to position this guy to mimic where a wheel would be, like so. And then we can Control D to duplicate, copy it across. All right, copy it across. And then we'll just duplicate it again, Control D. But this time we'll duplicate both of them and move them forward, just like that. Let's go ahead and name our objects here. The naming is important here, so we're going to call this car underscore body. Uh, and we'll call these wheels wheel underscore. This one will be front driver. Uh, let's verify that I've got the correct naming scheme here. So let's go into this vehicle. I'm going to open up the taxi in um, the unit editor. And we're going to click on this vehicle actor. This is our physics actor here. So we've got wheel front driver, wheel front pass, wheel rear driver, and wheel rear pass. And then, of course, we have car body. So we just need to make sure those names match up. All right, so wheel front driver, and then we need wheel front pass. Okay. Next up, we need wheel rear driver and wheel rear pass. Okay, and our car body is already appropriately named. Now, the problem here is, uh, first of all, you're gonna notice that when I select this guy, the Z is up um, and the Y is pointing forward. And of course we have X pointing to uh, the left here. Or if I guess if you're looking this way, it would be pointing to the right, since this is the front of our car. However, if we look here, we can see that our um, z, uh, <clears throat> z is pointing forward instead of pointing up, and Y is pointing up instead, and X, so it's basically flipped. Everything is flipped here. Now, I could go in and rotate everything and, and reset transforms and all that, but that's not going to work for us. It's not going to retain whatever rotations I do. So the best way to solve this problem is to group them and then rotate the group. And then we can get the objects, the children of that group, to inherit the group's rotation. So if I just go ahead and select everything and press Control G, we created our new group and we'll call it Car. Uh, in this case, this is going to be Car One because I already have a Car group. All right. And so now what I can do is I can basically rotate the group to get these objects pointing in the correct direction. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and move these objects out of the group. Because if I rotate the group now, all of these child objects are going to rotate with it. And I don't want that. So select all these objects. I'm going to middle mouse click and drag them up out of the group. All right. And now if I can select my car group by itself, I can position it. I can get its orientation to properly match the orientation over here. So if you remember, we want Z up, Y forward, and X to the left. So let's go ahead and do some rotation here on the group. So for Z up, we'll just rotate here discreetly. Pay attention to the attribute panel on the right. It's uh, going up in increments there. Now it's at negative 90. So that should be basically where we need it to be. So there's our Z up. Now we need this uh, Y to go to the front. So we're going to rotate here on the green axis, rotating around until we hit negative 180 here. There we go. All right, so now our axis on our group is matching the axis that we need for our objects. And so we can go ahead and reparent our objects to the group. So I'll select each of these objects, holding down Shift. All right, and now I'm going to drag them into the group. Sorry about that. Drag them into the group. I have one of those mouse wheels where you can press it on different spots to go to different things. And sometimes I press the wrong spot of the mouse wheel 
and it brings up my uh, Windows thing instead. All right. Um, okay, so that should all be properly set up now. So if we select the car body, you're going to see that it's still not the correct orientation. It doesn't match the group's orientation. That's just because we need to freeze the transforms. So we're going to go ahead and select all of these objects that are parented under the car group, and we're going to freeze the transformations. Done. So now when you select them, all the transformations are in the same direction with Z up, Y forward, and uh, X to the left there. Right? All right. So we're all set here. One more thing we need to do, and that is to position our car properly on the ground plane. If you don't do that, it's going to actually, when you drop it into your level in Stingray, it's going to be sitting halfway through the ground plane. So we're just going to move it up. We're going to approximate the correct position here just so the wheels are right there on the that dark black center line of the origin in the side view. Okay, so that's pretty much it for setting up the car. Everything is properly set up. All of your car body, wheel, rear, rear driver, and so forth, everything is zeroed out and it's all grouped under this car node. Now, uh, you'll notice that these guys have one at the end of their name. That's because they are duplicate object names. So I'm just going to delete this guy because uh, I know I've created him correctly and you know if you followed along yours should be created correctly so I'm gonna select everything and delete it and I'm just gonna take the original car that I created and I'm gonna put it back to the origin okay so our car is ready to go you'll notice it's not rigged there's no the bones or anything like that for it to work so we're just gonna go ahead and select all so we've got the car group as well as the mesh objects below it and we're going to do an export selection Okay, and I'm going to go into my Stingray project. So my vehicle template here, vehicle project, content, models, my car, and we'll just save it here as my car. All right. Now we can jump over to Stingray, jump into our my car folder, and we'll go ahead and do an import here. Now, if I'd used Send to Stingray, all this import stuff would have happened automatically for us, but I just used the regular FBX export. And it just required a few extra button presses, but I'm going to go into my content folder, Models, My Car, and we'll select My Car there. So on FBX import window in Stingray here, I'm going to leave everything just default. The only thing I turned off was level of detail because I don't have any LODs here. There's no animation or skeleton, and we'll hit Import to bring the asset in. Okay, our asset is alive. We're going to drop him into the level there. You can see he's uh, when I dropped him in, he's properly positioned on the level floor. Looks good, ready to go. Uh, but he's still not going to work yet. We need to do a few things. So first of all, in order to use this vehicle in the level, we need to go into the script editor. So if you go into your script folder here at the bottom left, and in, into Lua, you're going to want to load this file player. So this is a, the player Lua file and you're going to want to scroll down to line 110. Now this is this is using Stingray 1.2 uh, so this may be different for Stingray 1.0 or 1.1, bear that in mind. Um, and right here where it says, uh, see line 110, local vehicle unit equals world dot spawn unit, simple project dot world. This is the path to our vehicle. We're just going to change this so it matches our new vehicle. This one's currently pointing to the taxi. We're going to go my underscore car slash my underscore car. So that's the folder and the actual unit name. So we verify that, my car, my car. All right, so that's all we need to do in the script. Everything else in the Lua script is already set up for us. However, there is some physics setup that we need to do inside of Stingray here. So if we jump back to the My Car unit, we're going to double click it and open that inside of the unit editor. And I'm going to close that down just to make sure that was the correct unit editor window. Great. Okay, so you can see here we have our car and then we have the mesh objects underneath it. Select the car body and we're going to go ahead and create physics actor. Select that physics actor, and over here on the right panel under properties, we're going to change car body to vehicle actor. For the node, we're going to set that to the car body. Actor template will be vehicle. We're going to leave mass alone because that's going to be handled by our physics file. And so we have our first shape here. So we have five shapes here, right? We have our body, and we have our four wheels. But you'll notice that when I created the physics actor, it only creates it for one shape, the one that I have selected. 
Uh, this may change in the future. They may make it where you can select multiple shapes and create one physics actor. I don't know, but uh, I'm going to show you how you'll go about adding the other shapes here in a second using a JSON file. So we've got our mesh car body. The type, we're going to set it to convex computed. We're going to set our material in this case to uh, rubber. You could set it to steel, which would, or you know, any other material. And if you want to add custom materials, you can do that in the physics properties files. I'm not going to show you how to do that today, however. Uh, and we're going to set the template to vehicle. All right. So then we'll save this file. And next, we're going to jump back over to the level viewport here. We're done with Lua. Next, we need to go into the project to that content folder. So for the my car folder here, we'll go ahead and make sure that this is saved our unit and we're going to right click on it and show an explorer. So in the explorer window, you can see here we have a my car.physics file. Now this physics file did not exist when it was first created. This only became uh, this only got created when we added the physics actor to our vehicle. So we'll just open that up in sublime text or any other text that you like to use. I've already got mine open here. You can see the settings here for physics we've got um, our mass is it enabled the name of the actor the node the shapes involved and so forth so what we're gonna do is we're also gonna need to open to make this really easy we're just gonna open the taxis physics file so under four wheel you'll also wanna open four wheel dot physics and we're just gonna copy and paste all of that because there's a lot of stuff here that we need this includes adding the other shapes so you'll notice here that I've got my wheel front driver, wheel front pass, wheel rear driver, and so forth. All of the shapes that compose the vehicle are in this file. And this is why it's important, the naming scheme, when you set it up in my LT, You need to make sure those objects and everything are all named correctly so that when you create this, it will properly reference those objects. And then down below that, we have all the vehicle physics, how it moves, the chassis, uh, center of mass, things like that. Uh, the differential of the wheels, uh, on and on and on. All the physics settings are going to be found here. I'm not going to explain all this like I said. I just wanted to do a quick demonstration of how you would create your own vehicle. All you have to do is dig through this file and just you know read all of this and you'll understand most of it. It's all human readable JSON format, stuff, format so really easy to do. So I'm just going to do a con control A to select all, control C to copy, jump over to my car physics. I'm just going to you know select all of this that's already there and just control V to paste. All right, and because we use the same naming scheme for our objects, there shouldn't be any problems here. So we've saved this file, jump back into Stingray, open our car unit again, just to verify that everything is there. And if we click on Vehicle Actor again, now we're going to see that we have all of the different shapes here. We have all five shapes, and they're all properly set up. So it's just inheriting all this information the unit editor is from the JSON file. All right. Okay, so now that that is done and we've done our Lua scripting, we're pretty much ready to rock. So let's go ahead and play the level. And there you go. Here's our vehicle. Pretty awesome, huh? Pretty quick and easy to, to create your own vehicle. Uh, obviously, you know, if you wanted to go in and change some of the settings in the physics file, uh, you can feel free to do that. In this case, we just went ahead and went with the default stuff. All right, so that's the physics tutorial. And uh, like I said, it was just you know more of a, a brief introduction on how to do vehicle physics, um, how to bring your own vehicle in from my LT and uh, get that working really quick. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any more requests for any types of tutorials like this on any other subjects inside of Stingray, I'm more than happy to do them. Just send me uh, a tweet at Matthew Doyle Art or my Facebook. You can always like my Facebook. Matthew, Matthew Brian Doyle is my Facebook, my personal, or Matthew Doyle Art is the page on Facebook, and I do respond to messages there as well. Uh, otherwise, you guys have a great rest of your week, and uh, we'll see you next time. And, uh, you know, while you're out there doing your work, uh, just keep on enjoying what you're doing, and, um, you know, I look forward to see some of the cool stuff you guys can create with Stingray. So we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,